Mm. You've got to get Tom Rice on your show. Yeah, I should press him with some of these questions. Of course, I'm going to be respectful, but I definitely want to mm-hmm. press him with some of this to hear yeah. him spell it out. Yeah. Um, Paula Fredrickson will never watch that episode. <laughs> 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 I mean, let's be honest. Um, <clears throat> Festering Boyle says, and thank you for the super chat, are Jews today yeah. waiting for Elijah to come first, and how would they recognize him? Hmm. Most of the Jews I know aren't waiting much for anybody. You know, they, they, uh, they will leave a chair for Elijah at uh, Passover, but, you know, this is for the sake of tradition, for the sake of the ritual. I don't know anybody who seriously is waiting for Elijah to come first. That was definitely a thing back then. Yeah, well, it was, but even then I don't know how, how widespread it was. You know, I think this was more theoretical theology. That, that there was certainly a tradition that Elijah would come back. Yeah. And so if you're concerned about making sense of your traditions, then you got to fit him in somewhere. But an awful lot of, for a lot of people, this was... This wasn't what decided elections, shall we say. And... <laughs> JS has a good one. Uh, what does Dr. Collins think of John Golden Gay and temp, temp, uh, Tremper Longman's on... Tremper Longman, sorry, on Daniel. You know, I've read John Goldinger's work. I think it's quite good. Now, I wouldn't agree with him on everything. No two scholars agree on everything. <laughs> but but it's a good scholarly work. Tremper Longman, I know to be a good, serious scholar. I'm not familiar with what he's done on Daniel. Mm. Now, you know, most of my work on Daniel was done before I wrote the commentary. So I haven't been strictly keeping up on everything that anybody writes on Daniel since then. But Tremper Longman, you know, is a well-trained scholar. He he knows his stuff. Um, they're, they're both on the conservative end, mm. but that's okay. You know, there are plenty of good conservative scholars. And I'd say there are two of them. And Might be a good note to finish on, Derek. <laughs> do what? That might be a good note to finish on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I definitely want to, to to check out more. I was going to say, how does it feel as someone who's written a Hermeneia commentary? Like, do you think you've exhausted Daniel and that, like, uh, like really anyone who comes after you? I want to end on this one because this one I think is powerful. You have written so much work. It's ridiculous, honestly. It's unbelievable how much you have written. Do you feel like... As someone who's gone so exhaustive into Daniel, just using Daniel, that like anyone who comes after you are just digging up bones you've already buried on this issue and you feel like you've kind of exhausted it? I'd say uh, I felt that way for a while, but it's been, it's getting up on 30 years since I finished that commentary. So, you know, now I'm ready to entertain a few new ideas <laughs> <laughs> if somebody comes along with them. Uh, I mean, there are things that can be done. There are there are questions that can be done. Dr. Collins, I can't okay. tell you how much I appreciate you. Thank you for joining us today. Um, if you want to go ahead and exit, I'm going to plug your material here in just a minute and stay with my audience. Thank you. Let's do it again in the future. I'll get some more stuff okay. together. Maybe in the spring. Yes. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Collins. See you. Bye. Have a good one. Bye. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. John J. Collins, uh, what did you think about this show? Did you enjoy it? I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'm sticking around a little longer with you. Um, I am so impressed with his work. I'm always impressed with his work. And uh, he helps me to grasp all sorts of ideas pertaining to the literature and when it's written. I think the biggest issue that I run into when I'm engaging with some apologetics is they're kind of seeing all this literature as if it somehow speaks to itself. You got to, the Bible interprets the Bible. You have to read the Bible to understand the Bible. And that kind of methodology really, I think leads down a bad path on how to exegete the Bible, how to understand it without going to the, the, the time in which this stuff's written, the world in which it's fixed how do we see that picture in order to interpret the Bible? Because I can go read Hosea in the Hebrew Bible. 
about Israel and God casting Israel off and this and this and that. But then I can read in the New Testament. Somehow I want to connect Hosea 8 because it gets mentioned or quoted, referenced by Paul to give you one analogy. And Paul means what he means in Hosea? No, no. Paul, does he mean anything like what Hosea is talking about in the original context? And we've looked at stuff like this with like prophecies about Jesus. You know, unto us a son is born, a child is born, and, you know, the government will be upon his shoulders. Go back in the original context, and it has nothing to do with what's going on in the New Testament when they reference it, or a virgin birth. You know, all of these things, you got to read them in their context, and what does that author mean, and why are they using it? And Bart Ehrman said in his course on Genesis that the number one discovery, I thought this was profound what he said here. The number one discovery wasn't the Nag Hammadi library in the past century or a couple centuries. Isn't the Nag Hammadi. It isn't the Dead Sea Scrolls. It isn't this. It isn't that. Like all of this literature. And I'm thinking, then which piece of literature is it? What is the find? And he's like, it's discovering or really looking at the Bible as multiple pieces of literature that don't align, have differences of theology, different understandings of God and the world around them. And like reading that like skeptically or crit critically, looking at it carefully, not harmonizing everything you're trying to approach as if it's all speaking one, it's all one book written by one guy, God. And when you look at the Bible that way, you actually find it's really fun. As a Christian, I never would have thought this. I would have never seen the Bible and thought, oh, it's fun to pick holes and find out how human this literature is. But now I'm like, wow, I've, I don't think I've ever had this much fun discovering things about the Bible as an atheist. Now, you don't have to be an atheist. I just self-identify that. I know I pigeonhole myself, which gets me into trouble because some people go, oh, my God, it's one of those atheists. And if you're a theist or a Christian, you probably get like, yep. Can't, I can't take anything he says, you know, to heart or can't trust what he's saying. Oftentimes I'm only projecting that from my own experience. Cause when I was a Christian, I didn't want to listen to what the atheist had to say. I'd be like, no, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. There's no way he can understand the Bible and truly know what he's saying about it and be an atheist because you need spiritual eyes. You need, you need to have like, the Holy Spirit teach you the meaning of these texts and what's actually going on. Boy, have the tables turned and my eyes have actually opened. The truth has set me free. How do you, how do you put it there? You know? All right. I am going to check out the chat. Let me, let me, let me shrink some of this stuff here. Um, Obviously, as Dr. Collins left out, and I should have had the clapping going on, his books are phenomenal. Get the books. We talked about Jeremiah 18 on the conditional stuff. I love how he brought in the Assyrian work. In fact, next time I have Joshua Bowen on, I think that's worth a, a, a conversation. Of course, Josh will bow down and be like, Dr. Collins, you know, like roll out the red carpet because he loves Collins. Um, I wanted to bring this up because in a recent debate, well, I don't have to bring this up here. Oh, by the way, just to mention something. You see these little, mm, let me zoom in here. Okay. Um, to everybody looking, you see the unlisted stuff. This is stuff that is on my Patreon that I haven't made pu public. I have seven videos. The Son of Man will come literally. Yahweh and his wife Asherah. The invention of the Exodus story. The vanity of Solomon in Second Chronicles. The regathering of the Northern Kingdom. Is the book of Daniel concerned about the Davidic Messiah? Why have so many taken these bizarre uh, apocalyptic documents so serious? These are all John J. Collins. They're on my Patreon, and you can access those if you're interested in joining and helping us out there. 